Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at Midrange Shadowcraft. Why? Because Midrange Shadowcraft, this will be one of the last times I get to play this variation before the rotation. So, to break up some of the other videos we've done, I thought we'd throw this out there. It's your pretty stock standard deck, nothing too different at all. The only thing that I can really see is just different numbers, that's pretty much it. Everything else is just stock standard midrange, so we'll get right into it and check it out. So, first game is against Haven. Haven is a pretty good matchup against Mid Shadow, and I can see in rotation it'll probably stay fairly similar. I don't see Shadow changing its matchups too much just because it's always kind of been weak to the Haven card set, and it's going to have a very similar kind of matchup with rotation. Make sure to keep in mind, guys, the rotation will bring a lot of changes to this channel and to the Shadow Nexus and other organizations on a whole. There will be a lot more events, a lot more going on, and things will be a lot more active, so make sure to tune into those in the links in the description. So starting off with a solid game plan, soul conversioning, gaining shadows, building our hand, the pretty standard stuff. We can throw out the turn 3 Chimera or the zombie party, maybe even the bell on us. We've got plenty of options to go into the next turn. Getting rid of that 1-3 ward, probably a good idea. Don't want it to be difficult to get rid of later. Ceres, on the other hand, is perfect for dealing with a lot of these Haven followers. It's not so good against Elena, but against the current board, it's going to do fairly well. Just because it will deal with the Snow White, it will deal with the 3-2 really nicely without taking any damage. Of course, they play another Snow White. This time throwing out the Evolve, which this play is the only one that I question with my opponent. He decides to attack the Ceres, which then just kills his Snow White, whether he doesn't know what Ceres does or whether he's just hopeless. I'm not really sure, but I couldn't understand why you'd want to do that and then play the Heavenly Hound anyway, since you already used your Evolve. It just seemed kind of pointless. But we got a second Ceres on the board now, so our healing and damage output is crazy high. Basically, these two Ceruses is what locks down this Haven. But we have plenty of other cards as well. Prince Catacomb, Lurching Corpse, Little Soul Squasher, Bellinus, all great cards, along with Death's Breath and Bone Chimera for board flooding. So they do manage to get rid of one of these Cerus, which is fine. No real problem with losing one. Especially when now I can just pump the board with whatever I want. So, no real problem at all. Of course, the adorable Lurching Corpse waifu, for anyone who doesn't know, Lurching Corpse is a woman. Quite an entertaining one. So, they stack the board, banish some stuff. Pretty common plays from a Havencraft. I'm surprised they went with that banish, but I guess they don't really have many options anyway. And for me, stacking the board is the best thing I can do because that tribunal is going to be a huge risk to me. And even better, Prince of Catacomb makes it pretty much impossible to remove this board. But they do go for the Prism Princess, uh, Priestess, sorry. Pulling whatever they could need. I'm guessing this is a Seraf deck. They don't have a chance to play Seraf against me. That was also another odd play. I don't understand why you'd trade into that that way. Maybe because they plan on using a Decree soon. Otherwise, it just seems like a really odd play to clear off that Lurching Corpse in that fashion. And I just get to roll damage straight to the face. No issue at all. No real concern. Of course, the Decree does leave our board completely full of skeletons again. Which kind of sucks, because we could have lethaled if we had one less skeleton on board, but it's alright. We've got the Death's Breath and now the Demon Lord, so easy ways to reflood the board. Even after losing everything to the second Decree. Plus, it's got to feel bad to use a Decree on all 1-1s. 
So I could have went the Demon Lord route, decides to go with the Death Breath. Much more solid. I can really stick those to the ward while also playing Gourmet. So, not too much from the Havencraft player. Healing Prayer kind of makes things difficult and awkward. But, we should close this out now with that Demon Lord for 12 damage out of their 10 health. Those zombies, the undead, crazy strong. Especially when you throw some ward on them. And that will close the first game. Alright, so game two. Blood. Urius in his sweet pectoral muscles and his little chain. Ugh. Urius is a god among the vampires, I am sure. Considering I'm pretty sure he slaughtered 90% of the vampire race, if not nearly all. So he basically is the god. And poor little Luna being a necromancer versus Urius. It'd be so entertaining to see if she could control him with necromancy. But we start off with the same play, pretty much. We throw out a 1-drop, throw out the 2-drop. No need to soul conversion in this matchup. It's not this early, anyway, when you're coming up against blood followers where you really want to be able to trade into them. This play, though, leaves me with a few okay options. The zombie party was a little bit better, meaning I get to keep the lurching corpse instead of having to use the soul conversion on it. And instead, just soul conversion the beast gain the extra shadows and get that draw power that we need. Everything slows down a little bit as we have to rebuild our board, which isn't really a problem with Lyriel and a second Lurching Corpse, still the most adorable waifu. So clearly going for the Lyriel trade here with the Angel of Word. It's still a pretty big toss-up on whether Angel of Word or Lyriel is the better card to run for your one-drop damage. I personally like Angel of Word, but Lyriel serves a different purpose depending on your curve, which is why I, this deck pretty much runs it. So, Ceres gets a nice trade. We get a little bit more damage. Heal up, keeping us at a solid 20 health. Blood's most dangerous cards, I guess, is like things like this Belf. Esmeralda, stuff like that that's going to make it hard to trade into them. It'll make for a very close matchup against Mid Shadow with this Vengeance Blood player. But we get to completely flood the board again, which I always enjoy doing. And throwing a nice little evolve on our favourite waifu, Lurching Corpse. Hungering Horde, of course, they had to have the only counter to Death Breath in their hand. Not too surprising though, considering Blood does like Hungering Horde. So, Soul Squasher, probably the best way to deal with the current situation we're in. While also getting 3 damage to their face. So at this point, we've just got to hope they don't have another 4 Storm, where they can just evolve and trade to our face. So it's going to require a little luck. Alright, so fortunately for us, they don't have quite what they need. But they do get some really good trades here. I get a little bit lucky with this Demon Eater. If I had have hit any of the smaller drops, I would have been in an exceedingly bad spot overall. I do end up hitting the 1-1, one, one, which is fine. If I had that was the only small drop that was fine. If I had hit any of the other small drops, I would have been in trouble. That way I could trade into the 1-1 one, one quite easily. And throwing up the wards is just enough to hold out protection for this game. So, this is getting very tough. Soul Conversion, the only card, I think, that could turn this game around for me. I'm going to take three from this Urius, which is a heap of damage from a beautiful guy like him. And then having to Soul Conversion the Thane, just so we can end up using the zero cost as our blockade. 
hoping for a trade into that so that the, the, the two ones can do it, which they have to get through that whether they like to or not. So the only answer they probably could have had was to remove the two ones with spells, such as Hungering Horde, and then clear out the ward, but luckily they didn't have that. So very, very close game. And my final victim for Luna to, I guess, kill off and swallow into a deep, dark pit of a soul. We have Rune. Rune is always an iffy matchup, I feel, when playing mid shadow, just because it depends heavily on the variation of Rune. Whereas some classes like Blood usually can handle Rune okay, really not worrying about the variation of Rune. Shadow, on the other hand, doesn't really have that luxury. So, no plays for turn 1 or 2. Always a bad sign when you're playing a mid-shadow deck. Not having a 2-drop really makes things hard. And of course, I had to draw my 2-drop on 3. But, I need a way to get rid of this 0-2, so Bone Chimera doesn't really get a chance to come out. And, of course, they have their exact counter, Red Hot Ritual. Sometimes, I wonder if RNG Goddess is just, just toying with my heart some days. Truly. But we do get to see their Time Worn, of course, going for those burn spells. Which, if it wasn't obvious to most people by now, they're playing Burn Rune. Not much I can do against Burn Rune. At least not with my current hand, I've really just got to pick off what I can and play out cards as I go and hope that I can eventually take the board. Which Bone Chimera should help us do quite effectively. I mean, if they kill off Bone Chimera and we trade, we can activate Death's Breath, which then can follow up with Demon Lord. If they didn't kill this, I still would have had a decent turn going probably for Soul Conversion. Which, now that this ward's up, I think Soul Conversion is the better option. Killing off one of these 1-1s, one drawing a couple of cards, being able to throw out another Chimera for the Evolve. Chimera is absolutely awesome for a card. Having two bodies inside one, awesome. So, we've got the Demon Lord. We've got the Immortal Thanes. They are throwing up some more ward, which... It's always a pain when you're playing a more aggressive deck, especially mid shadow is a lot more aggressive than some of the other mid decks that are around. Mostly mid sword and stuff like that. Do get a chance to trade, which gives us the option to throw out the death breath. We're not too worried about their healing because they're going to do that regardless of how we play this matchup. It's just a matter of one keeping our health up while clearing their board out until we can finally drop big things like Thane and Demon Lord ourselves. Which with everything they've played so far, we're actually in a pretty nice spot. I mean we can play this Thane, do a nice little bit of trading, get some damage to the face, while also setting up for Demon Lord if they don't clear this. And of course, Mutagenic Bolt, the one nightmare that you could ever have against any class, except for probably Shadow. So, I love how it really has nearly zero impact on me, especially when they're already playing from behind with their life total. So, Demon Lord dropped on a four rat board is absolutely crazy. Being able to go for a full 12 damage burst, leaving them on two. Plus, now I've got a full board for them to deal with. And that's gonna be a way for them never to return, so... Luna wins again. And that pretty much wraps up mid-shadow for Star Forge Legends. Very soon we'll be going into rotation, it won't be long now at all. I think we might have one more video left before rotation happens, once this sun goes out. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed all of this month, it's been a great ride and with rotation brings a lot of new things. We're going to have unlimited decks, rotation decks, 
the new tournament events that are coming out. Also, there'll be a lot going on with the Shadow Nexus, so be sure to check out the Discord in the link in the description below. That's very important, guys. And then I'll catch you next time. See ya.